things have definitely changed. Yes, I'm in this glamorous world of Formula One where it is high end, it is high tech, which is really pushing boundaries and it's an exciting place to be. The career of engineering is definitely being far more respected, in my opinion, than what I'm experiencing. Welcome to the MTD Podcast. I'm Giovanni Albanese hosting today's show, a passionate engineer and a very proud member of the MTD team. I'm really excited and it's an absolute privilege to be at the Myra Technology Institute, the MTI, and we're joined today by two very special guests. Today we're going to be looking at how we can inspire the next generation of engineers. And my first guest is Al Peasland. And now Al works for Williams Racing. He's got 30 years experience as an engineer in automotive, aerospace and motorsport industries with 15 years experience in Formula One. Now, welcome to the podcast, uh, Al. Thanks, Joe. Great to be here. Thank you for, for joining us. And our second guest doesn't need an introduction. It's the Swarf guru himself, Mr. Joe Reynolds, proud director of MTD CNC. Wow, what an intro to you. Pleasure to be here. Been a great day. It's been an absolutely fabulous day and it's really opened my eyes. eyes. I've learned such a lot, as I always do every single day. Um, and it's just so nice to kind of um, try to give something back to the younger generation and to try and inspire them. And I think you've actually done that today, Al. It was a pleasure um, listening to your presentation. Well, you're very kind and I, and I really hope so. Um, you know, I think we're we're really privileged to be in the sport that we're in and I think we you know we almost have a duty a responsibility to use this exciting Formula One platform to engage the next generation of engineers and, uh, and young talent across all disciplines uh, you know that's it's just such a, such a good opportunity and so today's worked really really well a you know, great room of young engineers a lot of them all wondering what next you know where what decisions do they take career routes do they take how do they break into different industries and so just great to you know give them some advice and have a chat and, and find out more about them and what they're looking for in careers because obviously we need to shape our business to attract the talent the next generation so yeah it was a great I, day i don't think formula one teams necessarily need to attract students or or engineers they want to work for you but do you think apart from the, the Formula One teams, the perception of engineering in general potentially needs to change. There's still a stigma maybe attached with some elements of engineering. And I think that the Formula One industry is definitely the forefront of technology, but engineering in general is definitely at the forefront of technology in every way, shape and form. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very fortunate that with the industry we're in, with the profile we have, for sure it helps us when it does. When we are looking at recruiting and attracting talent, yes, we 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 are in a in a better position to, you know, sift through lots of CVs and lots of applicants. You know that, yeah, we understand that. But I think, in talking from an engineer of thirty years. Um, I certainly in certainly in the early days of engineering, there was very much a stigma in my in my opinion, uh, there was very much a stigma around being an engineer, certainly in the UK was seen very differently to being an engineer on the continent in Europe or in the US. You know, it was you were seen far more, uh, you got a lot more credit if you you know if i went to the us and said i was an engineer people would treat me as though i'm a professor or a doctor or a, a lawyer or a barrister in the uk it had that kind of it's just greasy dirty oily and as i say and that's that's you know only my experience from many years ago things have definitely changed and i think yes i'm in the, the this glamorous world of formula 1 where it is high end it is high tech and it is you know, it's cutting edge, it's bleeding edge, it's really pushing boundaries and it's an exciting place to be. But certainly other industries are in that space as well now and, and engineering and the, the career of engineering is definitely being far more respected, again, in my opinion and what I'm experiencing. Um, I'm hoping that's the case across the board. But yeah, I think, um, you know, chatting to the students today, listening to some of the, the, the courses that they're studying, courses that are new, motorsport, degree courses motorsport and engineering engineering mechanics courses they didn't exist when I was studying and so it's, it's great that 
you know, engineering is evolving and it's adapting and it's taking on these new roles and, and creating courses and uh, for, for students to chase these new roles. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. I mean, you've got... got sorry, Joe. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, Williams Racing, and there are others as well, it's, it's, it almost feels like you've got a duty. Not, I'm not saying you have, but from mm. the outside looking in, it feels like you've almost got a duty to... Um, clearly, you get more PR than the most of man- manufacturing, even though you're... You're not selling a product like you say, but you know you're trying to get greener, more environmental. There's there's a lot of soft benefits of having a race team. Yeah, completely, and and I agree. And I think personally, I have a duty. I, I think I'm very lucky to be working in the in, in the industry that I am, and so I have a duty to give back. I I want to give back. That's just my that's that's who I am, and and I really enjoy you know meeting these young engineers and trying to give them what little advice I've got and a little bit I've learned over the years, but anything I can do to help them and maybe reassure them that they're on the right path, you know, that I get a lot of pleasure and a lot of reward from that. But I, I think, yes, because of the, the industry I'm in, I should be doing that. And, and we do. And I think, in fact, not just Williams, all the teams that, you know, the sport has a great, um, has a great program and a great um, attitude towards the next generation of talent. We work, for example, alongside Formula One in schools, F1 in schools. They do a lot of work with um, younger talent, so 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds that are still at school, very much at school, haven't moved on to colleges yet. And and it's a way of exciting them about the industry of motorsport and actually explaining this there's more to the sport than just being a design engineer or an aerodynamicist. There are a huge number of different roles and and functions within the sport. And even in the F1 in schools business, they explore that and they they encourage that. Yeah, no, I'd agree. And people talk about the skills gap. I'd I'd like to refer to it more as a a training gap, really. Mm. And it's essentially when I left school, I had no aspirations whatsoever to be an engineer, I'll be honest. Similarly to the discussions today, I want to be a professional cricketer, rugby player, not a footballer, Gia, like yourself. <laughs> but it's, um, but yeah, two, two left feet me. <laughs> but essentially, I'm, I'm finding not just F1, manufacturing as a whole, STEM engagement is a much higher profile. They realise they have to do it morally and they need it for business as well. They do need these uh, these younger students, these you know younger learners coming through the business because many MDs now they are ex apprentices, yep. you know, ex students themselves. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not MD level, but certainly I came through the apprenticeship scheme. I left school at 16 and and went into a, an engineering apprenticeship. So, definitely have come from that that background as well. What's interesting for me is we see that. Um, there are absolutely job roles and functions now based on the, the, the results of all the technology advances that we've experienced over the years that simply didn't exist when I was studying or ready to leave school. So there was no way it would have been impossible for me to have chosen a certain career path, let's say AI, or I want to, I want to run my own additive manufacturing department. Well, that didn't exist when I was at school, so how could I have even chosen that as a route? And I think, I think the great thing with young engineers now is 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 highlighting that so that they so that if they don't know what they want to do or where they want their career to go, it doesn't matter because you'll probably find the job you end up in doesn't exist yet anyway. And I think just giving them that confidence and, and allowing them to relax a little and not not sweat it too much, I think is really important. But yeah, you know, as a as a business, you know, our job is to look at that uh, that training gap that skills gap not only for the young talent we recruit but how do we continually develop the talent we already have again because we have people in our team who in a few years time may need to do a job that doesn't exist yet and so we need to be able to train within and develop within and you know I'm working with our HR department uh, around Williams Academy and looking at how that looks across the business and 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 that's the intention for that is very much to to you know, wrap our arms around from the moment you know we engage with young talent right through to the point that person retires, and give them that career, that development, that progression. That's what I would like to see it do, and develop develop people right throughout end to end, and and embrace them, and look after them, and nurture them for their whole career, not just attract talent, find a job for them, and leave them there. That is totally not what what Williams would be about. So yeah, I think this you know these kind of things are great. Um, but it is all about that training gap. I, yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, go, go, going back to to a point that you, you you made 
uh, previously as well as well about um, perception of engineering I, I agree I, I do think that it is changing and, and I do agree with what you said about you know in Italy and in, in Germany for example if you were an engineer you got regarded as a doctor yeah. um, a very high profession and if you had a daughter you'd want your daughter to marry an engineer <laughs> never the case in the UK <laughs> um, but and, and, and it's so so true I think that in my opinion I think the UK has started to embrace the latest technology now including automation AI maybe we were guilty for quite a long time of not embracing it in my opinion and, and kind of when other countries were but I do think that now in the UK um, we are we are seeing um, a lot of investment yeah. into engineering and new facilities breakout facilities such as this one yeah. across the uk and i think it's a really exciting time to get into engineering probably more exciting than when we got into it anyway and why did yeah. you get into formula one now oh uh, well, i mean well just i mean just to pick up on that sorry if i if i may yeah. you know the work that you guys are doing with mtd um is you know is also part of the journey is also part of that i you know i'm loving the work that you guys do here today as you say we're at the mti um we get involved with the mtc in coventry and and all of those catapults and all of those different facilities around the country what i think i you know these are great this is such a cool facility here you know i never had this opportunity when i was a young engineer it's just brilliant that the that this investment's happening in young talent and, and nurturing early careers but i also like the way industry are getting involved as well uh you know the way the way large corporations within the UK are also embracing it and, and partnering up with these kinds of institutes and 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 helping you know develop the talent and I just so yeah it, it definitely feels more positive it feels like there's there's a big shift and there's a big change and it's going in the right direction um, mm. so yeah great to be part of that how how did I get into engineering purely by accident um, I, I actually wanted to be a police officer when I was leaving school at 16. I was, I'll was be honest, without this being a, an OWL podcast, um, I was bullied relentlessly at school. I, I hate, had a horrible time at school, um, but I was quite academic and maybe that's why I was bullied because I was a bit of a swat in the corner doing, doing well at maths. Um, so I left school as soon as I possibly could. All the teachers were like, which A-levels are you doing, Al? And I'm, I'm not doing any, I'm leaving. So it was, it was bizarre. Um, so I... I just landed an apprenticeship kind of by accident it wasn't engineering wasn't probably my first choice but um yeah 30 years later <laughs> we still are i certainly didn't expect i'd be working in formula <clears throat> one or working in more of a marketing and commercial role um i certainly if i look back at my career i didn't expect i'd be working in almost any of those roles i didn't know most of them existed so yeah it's been an interesting journey but um kind of by accident but i love it so, i can't yeah. believe you got bullied and you do look like a police officer <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna keep my mouth shut now just, to, just in case you want to retrain as you get older but no, if we talk about today fantastic event very inspirational event yeah. what's it mean to williams to be involved in events like today yeah, a, yeah, a few positives. I think obviously working with our partnership with Zeiss was, you know, it's something we want to do. It's a way of supporting the partnership, and obviously, clearly for Zeiss, this is a really important uh, project. This notion of roadshows and taking this on tour is a great idea. So we're more than happy to support that. Obviously, it's a great way for us to um, add on our own outreach and look at how we engage with um, young talent and. To be fair, probably attracting or getting in front of talent that we perhaps otherwise wouldn't have seen. You know, it's Formula One seems to be a magnet for certain universities and certain mm -hmm. um, areas. And so for me personally, it's great to get out and, and come to different parts of the country. And, and of course, you've fulfilled a lifelong ambition working with MTD, of course. Fulfilled <laughs> a lifelong ambition. Not only that, I've had a huge amount of airtime today. It's, I mean, <laughs> invite to a podcast does not get any better. So, yeah, I think I'll retire after today. Yeah, I can't wait to start talking about the technology at your manufacturing facility. Um, before then, just want to touch on one final point about education and schools I think that it's got to start from the ground roots I think that you mentioned you know that you're starting to go into schools and, and telling them uh, or teaching them or making them aware of what careers are available and I think that's absolute uh, paramount really yeah yeah I think you know I think by the time you're 16 18 you've, you've already made a lot of academic decisions that I, I personally don't believe will will direct you know or, or 
steer the rest of your future. I believe you can change direction at any point if you really want to, but certainly it becomes harder and harder. So I, you know, we almost need to go a little bit earlier than that and engage with those really young, young engineers, young talent, and, and yeah, educate, excite them about the possibilities of what's out there. So we're asking students to make you know, decisions on subjects and courses when they, they don't really have a full picture of the landscape. And I think that's that's on us. That's our duty to to get into those schools and engage with those students and educate and let them know what's possible, what's out there. Give them some options. You mentioned your partners, I said to move on to you know them. What technology have you got of theirs at your facility? So yeah, we, we've partnered ZEISS at the start of this year. We've been in discussions for quite some time though. So we've known each other for, for a, a, quite some time before that. We are adopting key technology that's in different areas of the business. So today we talked with Matt from ZEISS around things like the T-Scan, which is a, you know, a contactless scanning, handheld scanning device. We've, uh, we've got Surfcom, which is another piece of equipment that goes in our quality department, our inspection department. Big flagship item is a, a Metrotom CT scanner that we now have literally hot off the press has just been installed in the business. In fact, we're still building the room around the CT scanner. And, and that for us is a big shift because it's technology that we haven't had before. So partnerships like Zeiss help us not only replace aging equipment and take advantage of new technology or you know technology advances, but it also helps us bring in brand new tech that we've not used, which could actually change some of our processes. So we're Right now, we're super excited to, to get using the machine and understand just what change that can trigger within the business and how we can use that to help transform what we do. And what are you looking to achieve? Um, more accurate components or in faster inspection methods? A bit of everything, yeah. So I think you know, time is, is crucial. Lead time is crucial within, within Formula One and within the Williams business. So yes, if we can inspect components to the same precision, the same level of accuracy and reliability, but faster, then that's, that's a win for us. We can pass that time back to the rest of the business to do more design iteration. So we can, we can reduce our lead times, which is always key. Get parts to track as quickly as possible. Also though, yes, to, I think not, obviously it won't impact how we manufacture. It certainly helps us be more, uh, have better understanding of the parts we're making. Are the parts, the dimensions that we expect, are they as precise as we think they are? So it gives us more insights, gives us more confidence in the parts that we're putting together. But I think also, you know, it, it helps us streamline the process. It helps us rethink how we do things. And so working with Zeiss, it's not just about technology. It's about their support. It's their consultancy. It's their advice. Um, we're looking to them as as leaders in this space to guide us and coach us and Ultimately, we'd like to work with them to develop new solutions. F1's quite a unique environment. We have unique challenges. And so it's great to work with our partners, present them with those unique challenges and, and have them develop technology to solve it. Hopefully technology they then take to market. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a partnership in the truest sense. Now, I think that you mentioned education. I think that education effectively breaks down all barriers to entry. Um, and you need to embrace that new technology to move forward or you just stay in the same place effectively. Yep. And, and you were a perfect example of that as a business. Um, I know a lot of business have that fear factor of embracing in new technology because they don't really know about it. You know, yep. they, they, they're, they're, they're not educated on that yep. new technology and they don't fully understand how it will benefit their business or it may they may even look at it as a gimmick you know but can you give our listeners an example of kind of how as a business by embracing new technology is it is propelled your business and how it's kind of you know saved you know made you more efficient effectively yeah good question i think off the cuff um difficult to come up with a really good example so let me give that some thought i think what's important though is and for us in Williams, it's, it's key is culture. Culture of the team and the way we operate the business is what encourages everyone within the business to think laterally, to have that continuous improvement mindset, to be prepared to experiment and explore new things. So we'll work with our partners to help be our guides and to maybe 
be the experts in that particular field, like <coughs> Zeiss in metrology. But it's on us to have that openness, that open vision to think, what could we do differently? Are we prepared to experiment and try something new? Let's think out the box. Maybe Zeiss have some technology that is cutting edge, that's brand new, but we could do something very unique with it that was never the intention in the first place for that piece of kit, but we've got a use case where we can adapt it, modify it, use it differently and get some advantage from it. So that joint, that, that innovative thinking is, is crucial, whether it's with the partnership or just internally. So we want everyone in our team to have that mindset. How could I do it better, faster, more efficiently tomorrow than I did it today? But that requires the right culture, which is what we are passionate about within the team, instilling that culture and encouraging that culture so that people are safe to experiment and to innovate, feel confident and supported in doing that. So a lot of that mindset all comes back to how we operate the team and the culture. And you know, one of the reasons I'm at Williams is because of that culture. How much of your turnover goes back into R&D? It's difficult to say exactly, but it's, it's over half. It's got to be um, because we're essentially an R&D business. Ultimately, we don't sell our Formula One cars. We don't sell the product we make. So everything we do is about developing that product. So by nature, we're an R&D business. All money comes back into developing that car, both for this season to continually improve it, but also for future seasons and developing the next generation of, of race cars. So yeah, exact figure I can't say, but it's but it's a lot more than than most engineering businesses would. That's for sure. It's very. I mean, you're privileged to kind of have the luxury of making it your business to invest in the latest technology. Yes. You know, yeah. um, Joe, what would you what would you say about the kind of investment in? The latest technology in the UK. I mean, it's certainly you know people are certainly investing more now in automation, for example, um, than they've ever done in the past. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we do other podcasts talking about you know manufacturing investment, and it's it's through the roof. Um, Make UK have just done a report this week uh, on 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 Q2, and and it's staggering the numbers. Um, mm. Still still off uh, Q2 2019 numbers, but a massive recovery. We're nearly back to, you know, pre-pandemic, you know, wow. investment levels. So it's only, it's very encouraging. But you mentioned automation, but it's anything to do with R&D, isn't it? Anything to do with R&D, you mentioned AI earlier on. It's it, it's all of the above, really, but it's, yeah. it's encouraging. We're seeing it more. We're seeing more companies like Williams engaging at a STEM level in terms of recruitment. But yeah, absolutely right. More technology pretty much everywhere. Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, it, it's it's absolutely key. And I think that if you stay the same, you will not progress. I think, you know, change is inevitable and you've got to change with it. It's the only certainty is things will change. Yeah. Moving on to the Formula One car, you know, can you um, give our listen, listeners a bit of a feel about the car? How many components are in the car? How much does it weigh, the speeds? Um, and, yeah. you know, how often... You know, has it got to change for different circuits, etc.? Yeah, I mean, the, these vehicles are something else. You know, they are they're 760 kilos with the driver included, so they are incredibly light, phenomenally strong, but they are designed purely for performance, designed to get around those racetracks as quickly as possible. So, you're talking about a car that can do top speed over 220 miles per hour but can corner and stay on the track and generate up to 5g lateral g-force around corners the the performance of a formula one car is just exceptional for sure there are other vehicles race vehicles out there that could accelerate quicker drag racing for example but they can't corner very quickly and so when you put it all together as a package they are they are quite exceptional machines and then we're asking a human being to drive them around the track at those speeds with those g-forces in temperatures that are causing them to lose two kilos of body weight per race um, you know just through perspiration alone the energy consumed in completing a grand prix is equivalent to running a marathon so i've been told they so get paid well never, for it though they do get paid well <laughs> and i don't feel too sorry for them they pay very well but yeah i mean the, these cars are these cars are incredible but think of them though as evolving prototypes so it's it's a design a product that we're never quite satisfied with and the mindset of the business is how can we make it better how can we make it quicker mm -hmm. right now with a setup change as it's going around the racetrack bring it into the garage let's change something let's improve it 
to how can we make it better for the next race to how can we make it better next year there's the, there's a constant mindset on never quite satisfied there's always something we can do always and everyone's looking for those things they can improve where, where do i sign up you say lose a kilo for a, a, for a, a drive around monaco yeah, yeah. weekend in monaco and you're going to lose a, uh, you know, a kilo and wait i'll have some of that yeah just a final one for me i'll come back to today's event i've never seen such engaged students we've done you know some of these events you can just see people glazing over it's a 48 page PowerPoint presentation, no videos, it, 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 boring, frankly. But today it was a highly engaged audience. It was an engaging event, wasn't it? A highly dynamic event. No, it was great. And um, yeah, I think, you know, to, personally, me, I'm here talking about Williams Racing and Formula One. I'm very, I'm very lucky that I've got great material to work with and a great story to work with. Um, but in, in total, you know, I think the really, the interesting message for the students today was around you might not want to become a quality or a metrology engineer, but this is still really valuable information. It's really useful information to understand the importance of it. So I hope we got that across. They, yeah, they did seem engaged and, and that, was, that was refreshing. You know, it's young engineers that are really keen to learn and understand how they can direct their future. So yeah, it was really good. Maybe more to come, more venues, more, you know, more, more events. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, f from a Williams perspective, as I say, you know, the Williams Academy and our, all of our outreach projects, different campaigns we do, this fits really well. To do it with a partnership through Zeiss is great. To work with um, MTD is great. Um, you know, so, yeah, I don't see why not. I think this is a great way to get in front of lots of students from around the country, length and breadth. It's been it's been absolutely fantastic. I can only echo what Joe says. I think the students absolutely loved it, and thank you so much for for, for giving such a fantastic presentation. And I thought it was absolutely superb. And um, you can tell you've definitely done it before, maybe <laughs> <laughs> twice, but, twice before. But we'll find out, won't we? Because when we do the next venue, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. um, just just a few kind of final points, really. Al, you know. It, how do you become the best? I know it's a bit of an open-ended question, but you know, what are the secrets to your success? Mine personally, the or, businesses, or anyone's. That, the, the businesses really, or, or yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure I've got much success to really shout about. I think there's a lot. I think it's it's about learning. You know, I think it's about using every opportunity as a learning experience. I jokingly say you you um, you know there are winners and learners, not winners and losers, because you know, it's every, everything's an opportunity to learn. I think you've got to have fun along the way. I think the only way you will get people to, particularly in Formula One and the, the pressure of the jobs that we do and the hours we work and the commitment, not for the employees, but their families, what they give up to support their, their loved ones in Formula One. You've got to really love it. You've got to enjoy it. But then you do your best work. Then you deliver your best. You commit the most because you're in. You're doing something you're passionate about. And if the team embrace that and give you the culture and the environment where you can thrive, then I think you know that's that's removed every roadblock. So you know to being successful. Challenge with Formula One is we have very equally uh, motivated competition, and so they're all doing the same. And that's why it's not easy. But uh, you know if it was easy, everyone would be good. So mm. yeah, I think I think it's about embracing every opportunity as a chance to learn, and then enjoying it making it your passion yeah. if, you, if you didn't have any competition you you would be complacent it, it, it Where breeds be complacency the there would yeah, be no, it, yeah, no challenge no fun yeah um, it's been brilliant it's been an absolute pleasure and i think you've certainly inspired a lot of students today um and joe any last thoughts no just been a great day thanks for joining us and no doubt we'll see you again at a, another event yeah thanks again to yourself and everyone at williams it's our pleasure thanks for inviting us to join in and um yeah thanks thanks for yeah, letting us come and chat to the students and chat to you today. It's been great. Thank you. Now, it's been an absolute priv privilege. Um, uh, if you've enjoyed today's podcast, please let us know. If you've got any questions, don't, don't hesitate to send them in. And make sure you download the MTD podcast app on your smartphones. Until next week, the MTD podcast. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.